Hello everyone. In this set of videos, we're going to begin talking about asymptotic notation. In order to motivate this, we're going to talk a little bit very briefly about the types of problems we're going to use this for. Here I have a code snippet. We haven't learned how to analyze this type of code yet, but I'll give you an example of what you might say the runtime of this code is. If you notice, there's a variable in the bounds of these loops. They go from n to 3n squared plus 4n and so on. Those involve n's. We want to be able to say how long does this take as a function of n. So we're going to let t of n be the runtime with an input n. This is the way we'll typically define something like this. Again, we're not going to talk about how you find this, but you might be able to later in this class compute that the runtime here looks like some constant times 7n plus 3 times 3n squared plus 3n plus 1. You can, might be able to identify how I came up with such an expression like this by trying to find out how many times those loops run. The problem with an expression like this, however, is that that has lots of details that can be overwhelming when trying to compare outputs. The ultimate goal of everything we do in our foundation series is to identify what is the runtime of an algorithm and why might you choose algorithm A over algorithm B. So we want to develop a meaningful way of quantifying what an algorithm looks like in some sense for the runtime with ignoring some of these fit, uh, fiddly details that don't matter. In practice, you only really care about the runtime for this variable if the variable is large. So what we want to try to identify is the dominant term. If you've taken a course in calculus, you had this idea of growth rates that you might have used for evaluating limits using the Opital's rule. We're going to try to develop something similar here as well. So our goal is going to be able to identify what does this thing look like? So it looks like we have a constant times 7n is definitely the biggest thing in that first set of parentheses, and 3n squared is definitely the biggest thing in that second set of parentheses. So it looks like, in some sense, c times 7n times 3n squared, which is 21cn cubed. So in some sense, it looks like 21cn cubed. In fact, we could probably do even better, because that constant, again, it's kind of fiddly, so maybe we just say it looks like n cubed. That is our ultimate goal, to be able to sweep under the rug all of those constants and lower order terms, things that are less important, and identify what is the one most important thing in that entire expression. And this will allow us to have a convenient and consistent way to compare algorithms. It may have its own flaws, which we'll talk about later, but it gives us some way of comparing algorithms. Some people like to understand this graphically, and I'll draw a little sketch of what's happening. So we often, when finding the runtime, will find some ugly, messy-looking function. And it has some weird shape. However, we might be able to say it kind of looks like a parabola. Maybe it looks like a parabola a little bit, or maybe it looks like a parabola a little bit. Or we're going to try to quantify that idea of looking like another function. We will accomplish this by bounding the function in some sense, and we'll see our definitions for that later. But this is the idea. We're going to surround this ugly looking functions with two nice looking functions to get an understanding of what does it look like when we ignore a lot of those tedious details. 